I'm Darren Alexis, and welcome to a 20-something survival guide, the place where you and me learn to survive and thrive in our 20s and beyond. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Should we do this episode in ASMR? We should. Okay, guys, welcome back to a 20-something survival guide. I'm Darian Alexis, and today we're doing girl talk. So you guys submitted questions to us. Also, I got this episode idea from my friends, Jen and Jim from Your Pretty Also Podcast. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first question is, how would you approach dating now if you weren't in a long-term relationship already? Internal panic, internal screams. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't whisper anymore because this might be hard. Okay. (laughs) So how I would approach dating now if I weren't in a long-term relationship is I always say put yourself out there. I think it is so important, whether you are a girl, whether you are a man, to put yourself out there. Go up, introduce yourself to people in public because the worst thing they could say is no or the worst thing that could happen is they might already be in a relationship and they will communicate that to you, but you should not get embarrassed about that. I think you have to go on dating apps. Like If you are serious about finding someone like Dating apps are a great way to do it. I know you have to sift through the trash, but like you will find someone. I found Michael on a dating app. You really wouldn't date. You would just. I don't even know what I would do. Um, I like what you said, like putting yourself out there. Definitely. Um, I'm a little different, so I've never been on a dating app before. Obviously, I've never had a need to. Um So I would recommend like try to go out in your community and do stuff in your community, like do different activities and stuff. See if you meet someone through there that we have a common interest. Um, And if you've truly done like everything you can to meet someone naturally in person, then I would recommend like doing a kind of a dating app to just help you out because sometimes people don't like to go out and do stuff. So you might not ever meet that person trying that way. Yeah, I agree. Put yourself in situations where you can meet people. For example, join a local basketball team, join whatever you like. So like there's volleyball teams, kickball teams for adults. Uh, Look for Facebook groups. Like I met my book club, which I haven't been to it yet. We'll update you guys, but I met them through a Facebook group. So Facebook groups are great another way to meet people. And even if you don't like dating apps, there are dating websites. We are getting older. There are like Christian dating websites. There's Facebook dating websites. So that's kind of the approach I would take or, you know, go to events in your town. There actually are even like in Columbus, I think there are like singles nights or like speed dating. And I think that you can meet people that way too. Or reach out to like your friends, see if your friends, boyfriends have friends or coworkers or, you know, it's like networking. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Definitely see if like any of your friends, boyfriends have any friends who might be interested in you. That's a good, good idea. And that way you can have double dates and like everyone already kind of knows each other. Definitely easier said than done though. (laughs) Okay. The next question is how do you deal with imposter syndrome? So Kels, do you ever get imposter syndrome? I was a teacher for three years and my first like year, definitely I had imposter syndrome. I was like, there's no way I'm actually allowed to like be in charge and like be responsible for the education of 150 high school students. Um, That was wild to me. But like after I did it the first year, I'm like, okay, no, like I, I have all the credentials I need. I passed all the tests. I have my license. Like, yes, unfortunately, (laughs) I'm kind of going through that again right now because I totally changed careers. Thankfully, my coworkers are really kind. So they also like encourage me and tell me I'm doing well and like I'm doing things correctly, which really helps to deal with it. Just remind yourself like you are in that position because you're capable of doing that. 
Yeah. And for me, I also feel like I'm facing so much imposter syndrome with my new job. And I face imposter syndrome with my content all the time. And a lot of my friends are also content girlies. So we are out there comparing ourselves to one another when we should not. We are all different. We post different things have different styles, and that's okay. Um, So how I have dealt with imposter syndrome at work is one, texting my friends, (laughs) relying on my support system. I think just owning up to it and kind of talking to the people in your, like, I guess it depends on what you're feeling imposter syndrome with. But like for me, I sat down with my boss in our one-on-one yesterday and I told him how I was feeling. I said, I'm new to this industry. I'm new to this role. And honestly, I've kind of been struggling with it and I feel that imposter syndrome. And so he was able to help me and be a really good mentor and talk through it and reassure me. So if it's in work, definitely like tell your manager how you're feeling. Use that open communication. Unfortunately, we can't all have great managers, but I think for the most part, uh, your manager's there to support you and help you through it or your coworkers if it's at work. If it's just like in your day-to-day life with your fashion or with your content talk to your friends like we are all going through it and support systems mean so much send me a dm at daring diaries on instagram and or tiktok or you know just talk about it journal about it i think that's the best way to get through it favorite travel locations and boy do i have the spots for you so my favorite i cannot choose just one paris Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> J'adore Paris. I love Paris so, so much. Uh, that's probably been one of my favorite places to travel to, and I would love to go back there. Uh, Athens, Greece. Me and Michael absolutely obsessed. If you haven't already listened to two podcast episodes ago about that trip. And also, I love, love Switzerland and Munich, Germany. Those are my top spots. That's because I'm like an out of the country girl. (laughs) Like I can't think of my favorite travel spot in the US. Okay. In the US, my favorite travel spot is Chicago and Boston. Gotta love the cities. How about you? One of my favorite places I've been is San Diego, California. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to San Diego one time, but I was only there for 24 hours for like a conference. So that's That's awesome. awesome. What did you like about it? Um, La Jolla Beach is full of seals and like sea lions and stuff. So cute. It is so cool. Um, obviously, please don't get close to them and try to touch them. That's stupid. Don't be stupid. Um, (laughs) but you can get close to them. Like they're right there on the beach, and there's like a little like rock bench, so you can sit on that rock bench, and they're just literally right over the ledge. Yeah, it's amazing, and they're so cute. Like one was taking a nap on the sidewalk, so they had to walk and all who put little cones around. That is so cute. Yeah, it, it was so nice, and like the vibes there were so like chill, and everyone was so happy. And like the food there is amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I like anything like that. So I went to LA. It was I. It was okay, but I'd love to see more of California. Like I've always wanted to go to San Francisco. I've been wanting to go back to San Diego. I'm not a huge heat person, but I also want to go to like Austin, Texas. You've been there, right? It's kind of like any major city you would think of, um, but a little more country-ish. Yeah. Also in the U.S., like, I love Ohio, (laughs) okay? Like, I know a ton of you are not from Ohio, and I highly, highly recommend checking out Ohio, whether you're checking out Cleveland, Columbus, or Cincinnati. The rest of Ohio, we don't know her, (laughs) except for Athens. Like, I guess just, like, the big cities in Ohio, I think, are awesome. It's a huge state. Uh, so if you've never been here, check it out. But you have to like know know the places to go. Know you know your tour guide. I know we get so much crap, but like the sports events, so fun downtown Cleveland, Lake Erie. Like no, it's not the freaking ocean, but it's still. I don't know. I love it. I love Ohio. Okay, what can I say? O h i o. So I would actually kind of recommend your first visit to be maybe at the end of October because we have a bunch of trees everywhere and 
they are so so pretty right now oh. I know people like really hate on Ohio, but we went out to one of the like local coffee shops into a farmer's market and it was just like in the cutest little downtown. It really gave like Boston ish vibes, like little cobblestone or little brick roads. Like there's just so many different parts of Ohio. So yes, there are the cornfields. Like I actually live, there's a cornfield outside, but like where we grew up, there was no cornfields. So Lots of culture here in OHIO, <laughs> but I am a Midwest girly, so I love the Midwest. Oh, okay. This is a very good question. How to manage time, period, uh, between relationships, friends, family, work, keeping up with cleaning, cooking at home, working out, taking care of myself, etc. I struggle doing it all and I feel, oh, and I always feel like something is lacking. Yeah. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's normal, especially in your 20s, because you're in that transition time between, like, being at home and having your parents, like, kind of do everything for you and, like, transitioning to now you do everything for you. Um, it's very normal to feel that way. I definitely feel that way. I'm sure you have too, Darian. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we can definitely give you some tips on that. Yeah, I definitely can feel that way at times. And my first tip is to be kind to yourself. <laughs> be kind to yourself because as Kelsey said, like, you're right. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to clean. We have to cook. We have to do all this stuff. A few of my recommendations, some I do, some I would like to implement, is one, I think a like restful, clean cleaning day on Sunday. Sunday is your reset day. So on Sundays, I go to church first thing, then I go to the gym. Now I have the rest of the day to either go grocery shopping, deep clean my apartment, and meal prep. Meal prep is your friend. I try to meal prep. If I'm making like lunch for one day, I try to make it for like the whole week or like you can meal prep your dinners. And then that makes sure you're taking care of yourself because you're eating cleaner food and you're saving yourself time. So like if you have a really stressful job, if you just use your Sunday, like Saturday can be your fun day and Sunday can be your reset day. So that is like a little bit of my tips. Have you implemented any yourself? Um, something that I do during the week to help myself out um, is every day when I come home, I just like kind of walk around my house and put anything away that's like not supposed to be there so if in the morning i was like running in the morning i don't have time to do anything i'm like rushing out the door so sometimes there's still dishes in the sink from like whatever i was making for breakfast or coffee so when i come home i normally just like put those in the dishwasher or immediately clean them yeah. Uh, yeah. like building like a routine like think about it when you get to work the first thing you do is check your emails when you get home the first thing you, you can do is like clean up those little things. Cause if you're cleaning up the little things then maybe you don't need to spend your whole Sunday cleaning. I still do, but <laughs> that's a really good tip. Thank you. Um, I'm just really not good at like spending one entire day doing cleaning stuff. I don't know why I've tried. I it wanna... doesn't need to be an entire day, but like you could dedicate like an hour or like cleaning your sheets every Sunday. Like if you just focus on one thing that you can do each Sunday, or you can choose one day to do each thing. So like you said, when you come home, you pick up everything. Okay. For the next 30 minutes, maybe on Mondays, you vacuum, maybe on Tuesdays, you clean your sheets, maybe on this day you do cleaning and then working out. I think it has been very helpful for me to split up my workouts. So I gave this uh, idea to Kelsey and also my friend Shay kind of told me this is what she's been doing too. So shout out to Shay, but breaking up your workout. So like Kelsey, if she's going into work, she doesn't want to wake up to work, walk in the morning. That's fine. You don't have to, but if you can, or if you're working from home, just go for a mile walk. That's like 20 minutes or less in the morning on your lunch break, if you have an hour lunch break, you can spend 30 minutes for movement and then right after work. Then you're at least walking 
or like you could run in the morning. I think it's great if you can work out in the morning because then you do have more time in the night. But some people don't like that. That's not some people's vibe and that's okay. Yeah, if you're not a morning person, then you can always walk right when you get home, right? Yeah. And like if you, like just before you maybe even go in your house, apartment, wherever you live, just like if you're already outside, maybe just take a cute little brisk walk around your neighborhood or wherever you live. That way you're still in your cute clothes, right? No one's gonna see you looking like a Grinch. Um, <laughs> I am a Grinch on my walks. I don't care. <laughs> We're definitely Grinches yesterday morning. Um, it's okay. <laughs> but you know, like that way you can get it done. And then once you, because I know some people, once they get home from work and they're in their house, they're like, it's done. So maybe before you even step foot in your house, just wear what you're wearing, go for a cute little walk around your neighborhood and then go back and then go that's like very valid. So something that I personally do for all of this, I I like really have a really good routine. So I'm really happy about it, but it took me a long time to get here. So if today is your day one, that's okay. For me, I do go to the gym about like five to six times a week, but I do the same thing. So it's built into my routine. So for example, Mondays, I do go into work. So Mondays I go into work, right after work i bring my gym clothes with me and i drive to the gym so i'm stopping at the gym for my hour workout and then i'm driving home and so once i get home i'm getting home by like seven then i can cook dinner or use one of my meal preps and go to bed like read a book so like that's okay if you want to do that just like build a routine for yourself what works for you whether you're moving three times a week whether you're moving six times a week, like you don't have to go to the gym for your workouts. You can work out in your living room, put YouTube on the TV, do mat Pilates, do yoga at home, go for a walk. You don't have to gym, but like more than ever in your 20s, it's so important to start incorporating movement. And today can be your day one. So let us motivate you. <laughs> this morning, me and Kelsey were getting ready and our other best friend, Marissa, she could unfortunately not be here because she's in Brooklyn. And so we're like, let's just FaceTime her in. We can all get ready together in the morning. So we just did a little get ready, get ready before we go out for the day to hang out with your friends. And another point, as I said, I'm a scheduled person. I like to stick to it. So Wednesday is my rest day at the gym. So Wednesday is also my social day. So Wednesday, like one day a week, I can use it to like go to book club or I can use it to hang out with a friend, go for a walk. Boom, boom. You're checking two things off your list, working out and friend time. So like make one day your social day as an adult. I mean, you can have more social days if you want, but like one day a week, try to be social and get out go to trivia go sit at a coffee shop after work you know just try to make sure you're it's okay to lack sometimes but build routine routine help <laughs> routine help routine good for soul chicken soup for the soul <laughs> girl time for the soul <laughs> Um, I think my last tip would be remember, like, you can still do something fun on a weekday. Yes, fun on the weekdays. That is another Facebook group you can join where our girl Jenna, also from Ohio, okay, Ohio's producing some baddies out here. She created the fun on the weekdays. She had a podcast. She no longer does the podcast, but she has a Facebook group, and there's just so many girls in it. And the whole point of her podcast was to, like, you can have fun on the weekdays, basically. Like, don't live your life for the weekend. Where we're just going to have our self check-ins. You can journal. You can just sit and meditate. Whatever it is, be sure to check in with yourself and continue listening to the podcast. <laughs> this next question, where else do you want to live or is it Ohio forever? Side eyes. I do not know who submitted this question. <laughs> Was it you? No. Was it you? Was it you? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know. For right now, I love Ohio. I am really, really happy here. It's really great uh, being my friends and family. I'm loving my job, even though I do have imposter syndrome. I love our apartment. I think Michael loves his job. But I also, if if Michael wanted to move, I would be open for that because... I think it's always great to have other options. And if your partner is, you know, wants to go somewhere, I would be open to the idea of 
going closer to his family if that's what our future holds. So I don't know. But for now, we are really happy here. Just, yeah, we kind of are the type of people where it's like where the job takes us, <laughs> where the wind blows us. That's that's where we'll go. But for right now, it feels really, really good to be here. But North Carolina, is just it's really pretty. The weather is better. You still get all four seasons, but it's just not as extreme as they are in Ohio. Um, and the thought of, like, a change is actually kind of exciting for once in my life. Oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> change is so hard seasons of change are hard so the fact that you're so open to that oh that's so sweet (laughs) i think north carolina is a very beautiful place however me and michael we are both like werewolves we are very warm-blooded creatures and we do not like the heat (laughs) like if you guys did not hear on my italy podcast how can someone be miserable in italy but me and michael found a way (laughs) okay that is in greece and trust me you would say the same thing if you saw how many stairs there were and we were uphill for like a mile okay but i do not want to go anywhere that there's heat that's like the only thing that like and Michael has really bad allergies and like for the most part his allergies are pretty good in the Midwest but even in the East Coast he was like sneezing up a storm so like that kind of impacts impacts us um and also the East Coast next question how soon should you start talking about marriage and kids when dating someone immediately that is going to be the first thing you say out your mouth don't even say hello say do you want kids do you want to get married not like do you want to get do you ever want to get married is what i mean um i know some people are like oh you should wait you should wait i am sorry if you are in your late 20s like you need to be having these conversations because if i know on the first date that you never want kids we are not gonna be together there's no point in me continuing to talk to you yeah how do you feel um i agree i think it's really important to have these discussions with your partner um kind of as soon as you can yeah yeah i agree with that and it might suck because you might really really like someone and then you find out that they want kids and you don't or vice versa but that's something that you should not try to convince someone like don't ever be with someone that doesn't have the same life goals as you because I think having the same like life goals is the most important thing in a partner. It's not their looks, it's not how funny they are, but it's what can your future be together and are you on the same path and can you be on the same team to get there? So if he's team babies and your team not, I'm sorry, that person is not your person. That's just, it, it's just kind of a practical matter. Yeah, but you don't have to be like, <laughs> do you want to get married like tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, don't, like rush them on that. Um, but like you just need to know if they ever want to get married is the thing. Yeah. However, meanwhile, me, the very first message I sent Michael was, you're my soulmate. <laughs> and then he's like, what are you looking for? Maybe I shouldn't say that word on the podcast. I dead butt said. <laughs> I'm just going to cut that part out. I dead butt said to Michael, I'm looking for a husband. And he like didn't run and falter like some of the other guys that I, you know, messaged. So I I knew he was the one for me because you need to be honest about what you're looking for. Like who wants to play games anymore in your mid to late twenties? Maybe if you're in your early 20s and you're listening to this you shouldn't play games either let's stop wasting time here go to bingo night like if you want to play games seriously go play shoots and ladders but don't play with my heart your biggest x for guys (laughs) and where do i start where do i start my biggest x my biggest x are zins left around the house when men eat all of your food do you know how little i spent on groceries when i was a family of me myself and i three and one me myself and i like nothing 
my man eats so much and he doesn't even eat that much. He just eats all the food that I want. And it's just so frustrating. So like, but I don't think that's an ick. That's just a frustration. Ick, ick. I get icked out by hitchhiker thumbs. Oh my God. Is that giant thumbs? Hitchhiker thumbs. Oh, when they'll go like that. Like when your thumb is going that way, when your thumb is making a right angle into yesterday, that is an ick for me. I know you can't change that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that's mean. It's an ick. Men, men's feet. Ick. Ick. Men that show their ankles. I don't want to see it. I do not want to see it. Little, little no show socks on men. No. Hide your ankles. They should not see the day of light. The light of day. They should not see the light of day. <laughs> Hide them. Get the crew socks. I don't want to see your ankles. I'm very passionate about this subject. <laughs> Men feet gross. Men that wear thong sandals. Please stop. Stop. So this is a recent ick. Um, my ick is when I guess we'll just say guys it's says for guys when guys don't wear like a motorcycle helmet when they're riding a motorcycle my fiance recently got a motorcycle and i'm very thankful i eat smart and he puts his helmet on but now every time i see someone riding a motorcycle without their helmet it makes me like really upset does it make you okay but is upset an ick no an ick is when you're like Ugh. yeah like, you know, like, you know, like, not cute like, not cute yeah <laughs> get off the road <laughs> if you don't wear a helmet on the road you're not cool yeah. knee pads are sexy <laughs> safety <laughs> is sexy <laughs> um other icks oh oh my god huge huge ick. um when they leave their beard clinics in <laughs> the sink. disgusting criminal Criminal. Please use the water that's right by the sink to get it down the drain. All right, I feel gross. I know you like this. Oh my gosh, yeah, I hate seeing which is funny because I also make art with my hair in the showers, but I hate seeing other people's. <laughs> Listen, I make the art, but then I take it and I throw it in the trash can. Me, it stays up a few days before it goes. Oh, good. I know that's <laughs> disgusting. That's but like, what the, that is a uh, ick. But I have my own shower. Like I wouldn't, I didn't leave my hair art for you to see. But like the thing is, I see your beard clippings. Men, ick, ick, total ick. Or when like the seat is still left up and their pee drops are on the toilet. People that do not wipe their piddle, their piddle. If you piddle on the seat, <laughs> for the love of flowers wipe up your piddle it's disgusting you're already using toilet paper just take an extra lot and just wipe it all right it's really gross when we find it yeah that's a just just i'm like a very clean person minus the hair art so like just anything like when it comes to like cleanliness is a huge ick for me or like i hate when people this says men, but I'm sorry. I don't generalize it to just men. Like, this is just for people. These are my icks for people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some women have facial hair, I guess, but I don't think that they're leaving, like, their beard clippings everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're not perfect. There's definitely, I do very ick-worthy stuff sometimes, but you didn't ask us what our, our individual what we did that was icky you asked us what our biggest ick was for guys um also ick i don't like when people chew with their mouth open especially when their tongue also comes out when they chew like a you know what i'm saying <laughs> ick worthy what's a mentality shift or eureka moment you have had in your life for me, I feel like I kind of had two. I feel like a big mentality shift or like eureka moment I've had is that 
the people around me really could not care less. And I don't mean that by like my smallest circle, uh, but I used <laughs> I used to think that people in public like really gave two toots about me. Or like if I'm dancing in public, someone like gives me a dirty look they're not going to remember in like five seconds. So I saw a TikTok and I recreated it and I forget what the quote was exactly, but it was something like, you call it cringy, I call it fun. And that's why I'm happier than you. And I feel like that's a big mentality shift that's taken me a very, very long time to get to. And I think it's hard a lot of times because we always think that we're the center of the universe and the world revolves around us and everyone cares what we have to say and do. And the truth of the matter is they don't. So <laughs> that's been good and bad for me <laughs> because I feel like I'm a little bit more carefree when I'm in public and doing stuff with that. But that kind of leads into my second like Eureka moment, which has to do more with like social media and content creation. So this has been more recent, but part of me feels like Maybe I just don't want to be an influencer anymore, which is what I thought I wanted to do. I love my podcast. I love podcasting, but it's because I'm like talking to you guys about real stuff and I'm really trying to make a difference and help you guys and stuff of like that. But I don't know how long I'll do this podcast. As long as you guys are listening and want me here, I will be here, which is why your support and ratings and sharing this podcast mean more than anything. But I feel like just spending all my time on social media or creating content for social media is not necessarily the healthiest thing for me. So I'm trying to kind of really focus on that because I feel like, you know how Barbie and Ken, it's like, Ken's purpose is beach. I feel like my purpose for the past like three to four years has been social media. And I just don't know if that's my purpose anymore so I feel like that's a huge mentality shift that I've been having well what's in store I don't know I'm still reflecting on that but it's definitely been my biggest eureka moment and it kind of sucks because it's has been my passion in the past but I'm just as I'm growing older I'm like I don't know if social media is my purpose anymore <laughs> and that's okay it, I mean we have many many years on this planet to fulfill different purposes in our life. Exactly. So maybe that was your purpose for two years and maybe you just want your purpose to be different for the next two years. I thought that if I stopped doing social media and content creation, that I was a failure because as you guys know, like I've been doing this podcast for quite some time and I thought it'd be bigger than it is, which I love my small survival guide fam. But I also thought that it would be so easy for me to get 10K followers, 20K followers. And I see my other friends who I said, we should not be comparing ourselves to other people. Just like do so much better. And so if I like stopped creating content that I'm just proving all the people that did make fun of me and all the people that do hate on me that they're right, if I just stop and I don't want to stop, but like at the end of the day, if whatever you're doing isn't fulfilling you anymore, even if you feel like a failure for stopping it and switching routes, like it's okay to have those feelings, but that doesn't mean those feelings are true. So like if tomorrow I decide to quit this podcast, that doesn't mean I'm a failure because I still help some of you guys, you know, and we, we just, we're our biggest critics. Like so many demons talking all the time in our head but this is why we have our community this is why we have our girls our fam stop comparing yourself to every single person you see <laughs> yeah like you you need to stop doing that and i don't i don't mean like the normal comparison of just like making observations because an observation is fine right like oh that girl's pretty that's that's okay that's healthy you're allowed to do that i'm talking about like the unhealthy comparison where you start breaking down everything that's wrong with yourself because you're not like that girl. But that wraps up all of our questions for today for Girl Talk. I hope you enjoyed your Girl Talk. I yeah, know. you can tune in wherever you're getting your podcast, but if you're on Spotify or watching on YouTube, 
then there's video for you guys. And sometimes it's fun to see the video. And of course I post little reels on Instagram and TikTok at Darian Diaries, but it is fun to have the video. And if you're streaming on like Spotify and stuff, that helps a little bit more than YouTube. Still watch on YouTube if you want, you know, double dip. <laughs> tune in once, tune in twice, tune in thrice, just be nice. <laughs> See, this is why we're friends. Everyone else would be like, that was cringe. Well, you know what? I came out the womb cringe. <laughs> Truly. And if you liked this like format, so definitely more laid back chill, let me know. I'd love to do more episodes like this. Or if you guys really like the focus on one episode and kind of roll with it, let me know if you have any podcast episode recommendations or you want any specific guests on the show, always feel free to send, send them my way. Uh, you can even comment now on Spotify. Drop a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment. If you want to send me a comment, Diaries at gmail.com. Or, you know, I've already thrown out my social like four times. <laughs> Darian Diaries. Cool girls listen to Darian Diaries, a 20-something survival guide because I'm literally just a 20-something. Anyways, that's all for today. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. I'm Darian Alexis, and don't forget to survive and thrive. Mwah! <laughs>